Climate Adam is dedicated to talking about the disaster that is climate change. But just how big a disaster is it? Well, today I thought I would put climate change in a cosmological context. And now I'm no expert in the cosmos, so to help me do that, I'm joined by none other than Astro Katie. Hello, Katie. Hello. So, uh, who are you, Katie, and what makes you Astro, Katie? Well, um, I'm an astrophysicist, or more specifically, a cosmologist. I study the universe from beginning to end, how it changes over time, what it's made of, where it's going, what it's doing, all of that good stuff. We're actually both physicists, but I don't really know anything about the universe as a whole at all. I'm kind of focused more on the on the planetary scale, I guess. I mean, you know, if you're into if you're into that. The other thing we should probably say about you and the Earth and the Earth's current position is the Earth is now roughly in the position around the sun where it was when you were born, is that correct? That is correct. Uh, it is very nearly my birthday. My birthday is tomorrow. Happy almost birthday. Thank you. Now, I want to talk to you for your birthday about the cheery topic of the end of the world or the end of the universe. What is the most commonly accepted way we think the universe might come to an end? This has been a question for, for decades in cosmology. And right now, the, the sort of best understanding we have is that it will keep expanding forever. And what that means is that all of the galaxies in the universe are going to get farther and farther apart. And over time, the stars will burn out. And over trillions and trillions of years, uh, we will end up in a universe that is, that is really pretty much just empty of all of anything interesting and useful, and it'll just be really, really dark, and that's called the heat death. Even though the question was me asking you how the universe ends, that ended up being more depressing than I was anticipating. It's one of these things where it's it's uh, it's actually really hard to explain it without just making everybody really depressed, <laughs> because because you just it's just this it's just this sort of slow fade yes. to nothingness, and the heat death is like where everything turns into waste heat, like there's nothing nothing is left every like it's just it's just this sort of useless energy i mean to be honest i was i wasn't fixated on the word heat i was more, more fixated on the word death i mean it's also it's also a very effective death is this something then that we should be afraid of no i mean unless you're really really intending to live forever like in a very serious way <laughs> then there and there are ways that the universe could end um that are are much more sudden and uh and unexpected and and uh potentially imminent okay so what more immediate threats could the cosmos throw at us my very favorite end of the universe scenario is called vacuum decay and vacuum decay is this really cool thing where somewhere in the universe you can have this bubble form and it's a bubble of like a different kind of space and it's like this super lethal thing and it expands out at the speed of light and just destroys absolutely everything. And it could happen at any moment. Well, that sounds absolutely terrifying. Um, but as someone who spends most of his time being terrified about climate change, I kind of want to know which one I should end up being more scared of. And I think there's only one way to settle that. And that's for us to have a fight. Bring it. Climate change versus vacuum decay. Now round one is inescapability. So first, can we escape climate change? Well, we already know the answer to this. No, we're feeling the effects of climate change today through things like extreme weather events and sea level rise. Now, can we escape the worst effects of climate change? Well, yeah, we can. We know what we need to do to do that. We need to stop emitting greenhouse gases. Now, what about vacuum decay? If we saw it coming, would we be able to run away? Absolutely not. Okay. So, so for one thing, uh, if you could see it coming, um, it wouldn't matter because it's this, this bubble of quantum death. It, uh, but even even worse, you, you really can't see it coming because it moves at about the speed of light. So by the time you saw any effects of it, it would have already destroyed you. So, so no, no, nothing you can do. Like doubly inescapable. Now round two is extinction factor. Will climate change make species go extinct? Or rather, I should say, will it make more species go extinct? But what about our own species? What about the human species? Well, it's very hard to answer that, but what we do know is that if we don't do anything about climate change, it's going to put a lot of strain on human civilization. 
It's going to force many millions of people from their homes. It's going to affect our ability to grow food. All of these things could lead to serious conflicts. So yeah, climate change is a serious threat for extinction. Okay, what about vacuum decay? I mean, as, as long as the bubble happens somewhere in our observable universe, uh, it'll destroy absolutely everything. It's a pretty uh, complete extinction. There's, there's, really, there's really no, no possibility of outrunning it. So right now we've got a vacuum decay bubble that we couldn't escape from and will extinguish everything in its path that it can access. Yes. Okay, bleak. Now round three is how much it hurts, the painfulness of this catastrophe. Now for climate change, I don't know where to begin. There are so many ways it can cause suffering through extreme weather events, through inability to access enough food and water, through people just having to move where they live. Yeah, I mean, climate change is pretty painful, but somehow I have the feeling that you're gonna say vacuum decay is literally gonna tear us limb from limb. Actually, this is, this is a bright side. Uh, vacuum decay is, is a totally painless event. Um, this is an advantage of the fact that it happens at basically the speed of light. So you don't see it coming. In some ways, if vacuum decay happened right now, you wouldn't even notice. On that front, it's really it's really a very humane uh, way to to extinguish all of reality. I mean, this must be quite painful for you to know that this thing that you study, if it is going to happen, and if it's going to happen within, say, your lifetime, you'd never even know about it. You'd never have all this research confirmed. That is kind of a bummer. I mean, you would you would kind of want to know if it did happen. I guess all I can do is I can know that it hasn't happened. Okay, so climate change is maybe more painful for the entire planet, whereas vacuum decay is only painful on a professional level. <laughs> yes. Fourth and finally, we have reversibility. The main driver of climate change is carbon dioxide. And unfortunately for us, carbon dioxide sticks around in the atmosphere for hundreds, even thousands of years. That is, unless we can find some kind of way to suck huge amounts of CO2 back out of the atmosphere. But for the time being, we just don't know whether it's possible. Now, for vacuum decay, I suspect I already know the answer. There's no coming back. I mean, once the once you're inside the bubble, not only are you destroyed, but then that whole space collapses into a black hole. So that's pretty much it for, for the universe. There's, there's no hope at that point. Okay, I think we should end that battle on that note. Okay, so that makes it 3-1 to vacuum decay, and I guess I have to concede defeat. Um, I spent a long time being terrified of climate change, and while I still should be, it seems like maybe I should be more terrified and have more sleepless nights about vacuum decay. Then. Not at all. No, definitely shouldn't worry about vacuum decay. Okay, why, why not? Well, there are several reasons. It's very unlikely. Uh, it's one of these things where Okay, so technically it could happen at any moment, but the chances of it happening anytime in the next, I don't know, many, many trillion years is basically astronomically low. But even beyond that, we're not sure it can happen at all because the ideas behind vacuum decay all rely on our understanding of particle physics as it is right now, and we're really pretty sure that that understanding will change. So. I mean, most people I've talked to who work on vacuum decay and these kinds of questions say that probably the idea that vacuum decay could happen is just telling us that we don't have a full understanding of physics and something will come along and tell us um, that that's, that's really not possible. So does that mean that I win? If you call winning to have found a much more painful, drawn out, horrifying apocalypse that that will actually hurt us and, and, and our, our families, yeah? When you put it like that, I don't feel quite so good about my victory. You did say that we can fix it, right? Like, we're not totally helpless against this one. Yes, that's true. Even though climate change is pretty terrifying, we know what we need to do to stop it. We just need to stop emitting greenhouse gases. So, yeah, I guess climate change needn't be that terrifying. Gosh, you know, from my perspective, you, you don't even need to develop the theory of quantum gravity. <laughs> Bonus. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching and a huge thank you to Katie Mack, aka Astro Katie, for her terrifying explanation of vacuum decay. 
leave her a happy birthday message in the comments below. Until next time, bye! I really enjoy scaring people with physics, this is fun. <laughs>